Brianna McCullough. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey, how's the day going? Good. Has it been amazing? This has been such an amazing conference. I haven't really genuinely enjoyed myself. So thankful for the Render ATL team. Um, they have been planning this, y'all, for like two and a half years with COVID and everything going on. So I'm just super excited. There is no replacement for in-person events. Like, there is just not. I've enjoyed connecting with people and just being here, rubbing elbows with you all. So it's, it's definitely been a beautiful experience. And thank you for coming to my talk. <laughs> um, the name of my presentation is Lay a Brick Every Day. Who has seen the memes on Instagram talking about laying a brick? One brick a day, right, gets you to your end goal. All you have to do is lay a brick every day to build a house, right? So I'm gonna do something very, very uh, boisterous really quick. <laughs> For some people have about me slides, but I have an about me picture. <laughs> so my name is Brianna McCullough. Um, I currently reside in the Bay Area. I am Detroit, Michigan, born, raised, do do through yes <laughs> I graduated from Michigan State University I'm a current grad school and getting my MBA at USC um, yeah y'all I be doing a lot okay um, I'm a technical program manager at Google I spent the past two and a half years at Target as a cloud and compute engineer and infrastructure I've been in infrastructure for about the past four years and then before that I worked at 3m as a quality engineer so I've been in the tech industry since I graduated from college and it's been a great experience love it but today we're gonna focus on infrastructure now I have a disclaimer for you all the bricks I'm talking about are not the bricks Gucci Mane is talking about okay I want to be very clear we're talking about completely different bricks okay <laughs> I had to add that because the theme of the conference is trap, so not those bricks, different bricks. <laughs> so the reason why we need infrastructure is cold. I don't know if people have seen this meme, but when the Popeye's chicken sandwiches came out, this meme was floating around uh, <laughs> Twitter and Instagram because they were so tired. The workers were exhausted. The drive through lines were around the building. So somebody snapped a picture of this Popeye's lady, <laughs> tired, exhausted from making all those chicken sandwiches. Um, and that's how we feel when we're building infrastructure manually, right? We have issues. There are problems. That's the reason why we like to automate, set up our CIC, CD pipeline. Security is a, is a huge issue when you don't have your infrastructure written as code, when you're not pushing and controlling um, your GitHub, when you don't have any tests being ran and things of that nature. Manual infrastructure is a big yikes, right? You have no version control, no idea of knowing who did what, when they did it, and why they did it. It's hard to understand mistakes and even understand how to prevent making them, right? Because when you don't have version control, you don't know what to roll back. Um, at my previous company, company and currently, I see plenty of things that go to production and I say, yikes, this is not working as intended, we need to roll it back. When you have version control, that's very easy. That's infrastructure as code. When you don't have that and you are doing things manually, it's a lot harder to do a traceback. Understand where things went wrong, where you put that extra space in, where it should not have been. Um, your security is always at risk. That goes without saying. And one else become a common thing. How many engineers do I have in the crowd? People engineering? <laughs> all right, a lot of you all. How many times have you thought let me just hurry up and go type something to fix a bug, and I'll fix it later. Just a Band-Aid. Putting a Band-Aid on a wound, thinking that you'll go back and fix it later. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have your infrastructure as code as well. You have a bunch of one-off mistakes, a bunch of things that people never go back and fix. <laughs> and the last one, it's a sloppy mess. It's just a complete mess, and it's not good for companies. These are the kind of bricks I'm talking about, okay? 
So there are a ton of different tools I have on the next slide if you want to know what tools I prefer. Now, this is not a Google sales pitch. I'm not going to talk anything Google. I'm going to make sure I keep it very unbiased, okay? So one of my favorites is Chef. We use Chef for network automation a lot at, when I was working at Target um, to push our code to all of our servers. Um, how many of you are familiar with Chef Client? Chef Client is a great tool to use if you're using automation. Ansible is number one for me. Chef is number two. Puppet is more user friendly. Um, it's a great way to understand code if you're a beginner. Uh, and then you have all of these other ones, Slack. How many of us are slackers? You all are slackers. I didn't ask if you use Slack. So, <laughs> so that's the one. <laughs> that's one thing. We use Google Meet, but I was, at my previous job, we use Slack. Uh, and it is a part of your CI CD pipeline. Collaborating with your PMs, your product managers, and people up and down that range is actually a part of your CI CD pipeline. It's a part of your project um, from end to end. Okay, so these are the breaks we're gonna hop into today. And then Visual Studio Code. Whose favorite is Visual Studio Code? Okay, who, Adam? Well, okay, oh, one person? Okay, I like Adam too, for the record. Uh, but Visual Studio Code is definitely a fan favorite. So you underestimate the power of a brick, right? So. The thing is about when you lay down your infrastructure as code, it's not going to be perfect. There's a huge learning curve, right? Um, can someone explain to me what they think infrastructure is if, if, if you don't work in infrastructure? If you do, but if you don't, you can explain. Anyone? Go ahead. Speak, speak louder. Yeah, that's a good one. Anyone else? Yep. Anyone else have a good example? Okay, so I do a lot of community talks. And when I talk to kids or high schoolers, I always talk about infrastructure is like building a house. The infrastructure is at the bottom, right? So you're not going to go buy a house if the bottom is, is caved in, right? You need a solid foundation to build that house on top of. That house is your applications. It's where your code runs, right? But that foundation is your infrastructure. That's your back end, right? And I always say as infrastructure engineers, if we're doing our job correctly, you should never see us. You should never hear about us. But you see us a lot. <laughs> so maybe we're not doing our job the best. But <laughs> infrastructure engineering is definitely a behind the scenes job. And some of those things include, and you might know of this already, networks, how many of us use VMs? Everyone should, everyone that's an engineer. Okay, <laughs> VMs. Okay, connection topology. How many of us use automation for the pipeline? Okay. And then enabling developers or operations teams to automatically manage, um, monitor and provision anything that's going on in your CI CD pipeline. Does anyone work in observability or monitoring? Okay, one person, cool. Okay, so with the CI CD, you can see here on the picture, you have your network, your application, your storage, security. You have everything that you wouldn't have if you made one off code changes all the time. You lose your security, you lose your source control, you lose your templates, your scripts, and you definitely don't have a policy. It's very hard to keep up with policies when everything is ad hoc. So you might be asking me, okay, we get it. Why should every company be doing this? How many people think repeatability is important? You need to be able to repeat your steps, right? Because if you've been at a company for 10 years and you up and leave, who's gonna be able to do it for you? You must build code so that it's repeatable, so that somebody or whoever is coming behind you will be able to repeat whatever you've done. Troubleshooting. How many of us troubleshoot? <laughs> All day long. That's what we do, right? Half, most of our job is writing code. The other half is debugging, troubleshooting, understanding where we went wrong. 
when you don't have your infrastructure as code, you can't do that. And if you are doing it, it's counterproductive, right? Um, disaster recovery. Who works at a company that's experienced a disaster? Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Lots of disasters, right? Like, um, I know when I was working at Target, there was the Father's Day disaster, and I was there around that time, um, and I was an on-call engineer at that time. It makes it very hard when you don't have a feasible um, feature that you can roll back. When disasters happen, you have to go, it makes it harder to search for what happened. What did you commit that broke the system? How do we fix this? It makes it harder to lay out your steps. Visibility. Does anybody get graded on how many coding commits they make? You don't have to, you can be honest. <laughs> At least thank you for the honesty. But some people do. Some companies are very, I don't agree with it, but a lot of companies are very code commit heavy. If you don't have a CICD pipeline, if you don't have visibility, how can you see that? And then I, the obvious one is security. We don't want to get breached. We want our companies, our main goal is to always protect our companies so that they're safe. Okay? So, I'm very biased, right? So this would be what your CD, CICD pipeline would look like. So you have your templates, your scripts, your policies, and they would go through Ansible, Terraform, Chef, Puppet. How many of us are still using Terraform? I love Terraform. Terraform has always been my favorite. Um, I love Ansible more, but Terraform is a great one. Chef is good. Who uses Ansible? Okay, nobody. Chef, one. And then do we have anyone using Puppet? Oh, okay, that's the response I expected to hear. I've never used Puppy before, but I've never heard the best things about it either. So once you put your scripts and your templates and your policies into your <clears throat> infrastructure controller is what I'm gonna call it, then you have your network. Hey, remember that house I was saying you are building? So the infrastructure is the what? The foundation, right? So the infrastructure, you see Ansible, Terraform, Chef. There, that's your foundation. And then from there, you get your network, your applications, think UI, UX, storage, security, and your cloud infrastructure. And that's how infrastructure as code works. <laughs> so if you lay one brick, eventually you'll be able to build a house. So with Chef Client, I'm going to use this specifically because I have the most experience in it. You configure your machines on one device. How hard do you think if you didn't have automation it would be to configure a device? Thousands, 10,000 servers. How long do you think it would take? <laughs> it would take forever, right? So for companies, when you think of like the Googles, the Facebooks, the huge tech companies, and even the mid-sized ones, right, that push and they scale very quickly, if you weren't doing IAC, which most of them are, you couldn't scale. There's no way you can scale your organization or your business if you're not using infrastructure encoded, if you're not encoding it, and if you're not using, um, if you're not using your local machine to configure multiple devices, right? So you have your chef client, you push that to your chef server, and that's where you get your app servers, each of them running that chef agent. You only need one device. I could look on my computer, do a code commit, publish it, approve it. Not myself, because you need reviewers, right? <laughs> so I couldn't do anything myself, which is, which is what controls. That's the good thing, right? Like, we need approvers for our code. You can't push anything without having someone approve it. And that also helps with security, reliability, duplication, and things of that nature. So I could write up some code, some patching, fix an error, push it to my chef server, and eventually push it all the way up to 10,000 machines if that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> so you have to test. How many of us don't test? Okay, who, you do test. You're not ready yet, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so who does test? Test your code. What kind of tests do you all use? End-to-end? 
Okay. Integration, RTL. Okay. Unit test. Okay, that's up here. Integration test, unit test, HMI, security and you. Performance testing, yeah, usability. Um, we do UATs all the time, right? When your engineers, they build something, they want to implement it into a tool, you need to make sure it works. So I'd say that to say, and let me check my time. Oh, y'all, I'm running out of time. I'm supposed to be off the stage at 2 o'clock. Okay. So I say that to say, when you're pushing your code, when your infrastructure is coded, you are able to push your code way easier um, you, it's tested, it goes through Docker, there's drama with Docker on Twitter, I don't know what that was about, but there's a lot of Docker things going on where you can push your code through there, do your testing, and things like that. But there are a couple cons, which you know we had to get to. Wherever there are pros, there always will be cons. Um, in the beginning, it's an adjustment. Whenever I've seen smaller companies Whenever I've seen smaller companies implement IAC method, infrastructure as code, there's always a learning curve, right? You have to bring people in that specialize, that need to understand um, what you're doing, how you're doing it. You have to train people, right? Especially if it's a smaller organization, you've never done it before. Um, connecting the CICD pipeline is a headache. How many of us have failed tests over and over again? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's a good thing when you have failed. So that means what you're, it's working. Your CICD pipeline is working. You're protecting your business and you're protecting your code. Um, learning curve, if you want to talk to me after, I'll be in the Q&A room to talk about my favorite tools and how I use them and how best to configure them. Um, and integration. Whenever you implement any new tool in any organization, you have to have integration, right? People have to adapt. That takes time. It's like merging. It's like dealing with a merger, dealing with an acquisition. People have to eventually adjust. <laughs> Are you all ready to move on with the show? <laughs> so if I could just wrap it up, um, I want you all to understand IAC is the future. I've been working on infrastructure for, I would say my time has been limited compared to some of you who've probably been in a way longer. So it's been about four years for me. Love it. Enjoy it. Um, IAC is the future. I enjoy doing it. If it's something that you're ever interested in, please reach out to me on Twitter at Brie Limitless. Um, choose your tool. Feel free to ask me about tools in the Q&A room. I've used a ton of them, a ton of different tools. Um, Test your stuff. And I don't want to find out that any of you are not testing, right? That's what causes issues. Um, that's why you see us needing disaster recovery, things of that nature. But also understand, even if you test, there are things that are bound to get missed. So never feel bad about your code breaking. Um, it's a slow process, but it is very, very worth it. So making sure your infrastructure as code is working up, you have your CICD pipeline, you have your automation, you're building your foundation so you can build that house brick by brick. My name is Brianna McCullough. You can find me across all social media at Brie Limitless. And thank you for having me today.